So hi, I'm James O'Brien, a professor here at UC Berkeley. I've been here since July of 2000, so it's been about 18 years since I joined the faculty. Um, it's a great place to be, and we have really great students here. The research that I've done in my lab focuses mainly on computer simulation of physical systems. Um, for generating the movement and animation that you see in films. So if you've watched a film and you've seen special effects such as uh, you know, Godzilla crushing a building or um, the Incredible Hulk smashing something, spaceships crashing into each other, this is all um, done nowadays using uh, techniques called computer simulation that actually model the physics of it. And a lot of the techniques for doing this have been developed in the lab here um, by my students and uh, working collaboration with uh, people here at UC Berkeley and also at some other institutions where we've had good collaborations. Mm -hmm. Some of the more recent work that we've done was used in, uh, I guess in the last five years in about um, over a hundred films for doing destruction effects. And, and in 2015, we got an Academy Award for that work also teach classes here at UC Berkeley in addition to doing the research. The classes that I teach mainly focus again on computer graphics. Um, this semester I'm teaching a course on AR and VR and um, we're having a lot of fun in that class trying to explore how the technology can use to do address different types of applications, um, you know, ranging from healthcare to uh, inter industrial design and a lot of other things in between. So. In addition to the work that I do here uh, on campus, um, one of the other things that's really great about being in the Bay Area is the opportunity to work with companies outside the university. So in the last few years, I've been working with a company called Avometric, which is building a system that uh, allows you to, when you're shopping online, using a desktop computer in the web browser, or using your mobile phone, allows you to try on clothing virtually before you purchase it. And the idea is to try to replicate the the way you go into a changing room in a store and you're able to sort of decide which size will fit you better, whether or not a style complements your body, um, whether or not you just like how something looks. Um, normally that requires putting the garment on physically and what we've been trying to do is to replicate that process um, virtually using computer simulation. So one of the things I've really enjoyed about being a professor for the last 18 years is the opportunity to work with students. Um, I think that Students can be really amazing. They are, they're, they're typically very excited about what they're learning. They're very excited to go out and do new things with, with, their, with their experience. Um, I'm happy to answer questions that students have, whether it's you know, about the technical material that they're trying to learn. And a lot of times it can be difficult to wrap your head around it and try to figure out what it, what it means, what, what the explanation is. Um, but if you persevere and once you understand something, it's actually really amazing how things that seem complicated end up being simple once you once you manage to make that connection and understand what what it is that you're looking at. Um, and I enjoy the opportunity to try to help students do that. Um, I'm also very excited about helping students um, think about ways in which what they're learning can be applied to the real world. Um, it's I think that many of us when we're studying technology we become very excited about the technology. There's a lot to learn there, there's a lot to do, and there's a lot of challenges that when we find a solution to a problem, it can be very, very fulfilling, very rewarding. Um, the next step beyond that is once you, found, once you have developed the skills to solve these problems, to go out into the world and try to find the real problems that, um, that are facing the world and see how you can use the technology, the skills that you've learned to address those problems and try to build something that makes the world a better place. So one of the things that I'm looking forward to doing as I work with RAVE is to um, meet the students that are participating in the program, get to know them, get to uh, where, where they have questions, try to help them with those questions, try to help them make those leaps of understanding that allow them to really master an area. I think that's going to be very exciting and I think it's going to be a great opportunity. I hope the students will have a great opportunity there and I think it'll be a good opportunity for me too because I really do enjoy this type of effort with the students. So both AR and VR, that is augmented reality and virtual reality, are very interesting areas. I think that uh, a lot of people are starting to pay attention to them now. There's a lot of excitement. There's a, both from companies that are building hardware to try to, su to support AR and VR experiences. And there's a lot of excitement or a lot of activity that's coming on the, the side of software, building the software that powers these sorts of experiences that runs the hardware and also building software that um, creates certain experiences for users. Um, I think what maybe a lot of people don't realize is that AR and VR technology, the, the ideas have been around since 
since, well, I, I first experienced them back in the early 90s and actually the ideas predate even then. Back then the technology was a lot more, um, I guess the word is clunky, a lot more bulky and difficult to work with today um, and very expensive. Today it's become uh, much smaller, um, easier to work with, and of course quite a bit cheaper. Um, but in some ways the technology, while it's changed a lot, the fundamental idea has remained the same. Um, it's becoming very practical now, so a lot of people are excited about it. Um, and certainly the technology has gone to the point where for a few hundred dollars you can go buy a, a head-mounted display and you can experience VR, um, or you can buy a slightly different head-mounted display and you can experience AR, or you can even use your phone and have an augmented reality experience. The technology is getting to the point where it works, and I think one of the big challenges is going to be finding applications that utilize this this type of this modality of viewing, this way of viewing the world, this way of interacting with the world, um, in a way that's useful for the applications. So, virtual reality, for example, is you know the the, the case for a video game is very very simple, right? You know, if you're playing a video game and you want to be immersed in that world, then virtual reality seems like a great great way of doing it. Um, one of the questions right now that is, I think, that is, I think, a challenge for a lot of people working in the VR space is, once you go beyond entertainment, when you go beyond video games, when you go beyond film, what are the other applications for VR? And I think it's it's a little bit hard to come up with the good application cases for VR. Um, people are people are coming up with some great ideas, and I think it's going to be something that evolves over time. People haven't really been able to answer this question yet because the technology wasn't there and easy to use. Now that it is becoming easy to use, widely available, it's opening it up for creative people to come in and try to find applications of it. Augmented reality, I think, is a little bit of an easier um, easier case for finding good applications. Um, all of us interact with the world on a daily basis, and when we're driving, we need directions. When I go to a conference and I and I meet people that I haven't, or I meet again people that I met last year, but maybe I don't remember their name. So you can imagine, you know, augmented reality providing all sorts of very practical solutions, ranging from driving instructions as I'm driving that won't interfere with my ability to pilot the vehicle safely, to you know when you run into somebody you met once, it can remind you by facial recognition who you're talking to and where you saw them last time. Um, if you're working on a complex task, augmented reality might provide guidance for helping you do that. So the case for augmented reality, the applications, I think there are many of them, I think those are very compelling. The hardware, interestingly enough, I think is still at a, at a difficult stage where the augmented reality, like if you, for example, look at HoloLens, it's a really great piece of technology but it's still quite large and quite bulky and, and also very expensive. So this is, you know, the, the challenge for augmented reality, I think, is to come up with a, eventually get the hardware to the point where it's as lightweight and uninvasive as a pair of eyeglasses. Um, once we get there, I think there's a huge range of applications that are, that are very clear. For virtual reality, the hardware is, um, I think, in some ways ahead of the hardware for AR because um, it doesn't have to be quite as lightweight. Um, however, the applications, as I said before, that I think it's challenging to come up with really great applications for virtual reality that aren't video games and entertainment. Not that I have anything against them. I actually think I've done a lot of work in those areas. I love video games. I love, I love film. I think those are great uses for VR, but it really would be nice also to start looking at other applications for VR beyond those. Um, VR also does still have a few challenges left with the hardware. Um, as far as it's come and you know we've got great resolution but there are still some subtle effects about how our eye interacts with uh, when we view things with our eyes um, that aren't quite perfected in, in virtual reality uh, head mounted displays um, and I'm thinking in particular about things like focus so just something to think about um, and this might be getting a little technical but when you view a uh, put on a head mounted display and you view something in stereo that is each eye has seen a different view the result is that you perceive depth. Things will you know, not just be on a flat surface, they actually fill out the volume of space that you're viewing. But your eye is always focused on the depth of the screen. And if you think about how you look around the real world, um, the fact that you can only focus at one depth at a time, and as you focus at different depths, some things will be blurry, some things will be clear, that actually tells us a lot about the space we're in. And our brain uses, it to under, uses that information, the information about focus and blur, to understand the volume of space we're in. And right now our displays don't manage to reproduce that when you're using a head-mounted display. 
So getting that perfected, finding a way to do that effectively and cost efficiently is going to be a big, um, once that's done, that's going to be a big improvement. Um, there's also just the VR right now is still kind of a little bit bulky. It covers your face. Um, some people get um, start feeling a little claustrophobic. Others will just say they're getting hot. Um, and so building more comfortable equipment um, will also, I think, make a, make a big improvement to the, the VR experience and help um, help increase the acceptance in consumers that are looking at this technology, right? Right now, they're, if, you're, if you're, thinking about, you're thinking about spending your afternoon playing a video game and your choice is to put on a head-mounted display and maybe be uncomfortable or to watch your television set, um, which one are you gonna choose? And if, you, if we want people to be choosing the VR option, then we really need to work on making the VR experience more comfortable and, uh, and uh, enjoyable for the people who experience it. Right. So thanks a lot for watching the video. Um, it was nice having a chance to tell you a little bit about my, my thoughts on AR and VR. And uh, if you're one of the students working with Rave, I'm looking forward to hearing from you and hearing your questions. And uh, thanks a lot.